Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everybody. So today I want to talk about a very interesting uh, cycle um, that allows us um, as people, as humans, uh, or even as Muslims, to take a what's called a universal row value from being such a row value to being a social system that is accepted uh, by society. So when we ask uh, questions such as, what does justice mean? What does the idea of shura or consultation uh, mean? What does the concept of equity uh, or equality uh, mean? A lot of these concepts, they're very universal. They're not just Islamic, they're universal and they're accepted by all, almost all factions of society and humanity um, in general. And if we continue to only speak about these concepts in their raw form, it becomes very difficult to have a physical manifestation, to have a social manifestation of these uh, values. And today I wanna to walk you through the cycle of how such concepts can be taken from being universal raw values to being systems that are protected. So the first uh, step, uh, it's a five step process. The first step is actually knowing what is that universal raw value. So recognizing, for example, that there is a raw value such as justice or one that is equity or one that is public consultation or people's consultation. I don't want to use the term democracy because democracy is a manifestation of it. Uh, but basically the idea that what democracy stood for in its raw form. Um, in Islam, that concept is known as shura, which means consultation people's consultation. You ask the people for uh, their opinions or you involve them in the process. So that's the first step is to name that raw value. The, six, the next step is to actually de do a very deep dive, a philosophical deep dive into that raw concept and attempt to answer a very important question. How does that raw value align with what we want to do with society. So for example, do we want our society to be progressive and to continue development and to continue growing? Do we wanna keep society the same way as it is? Um, once we define that, now we ask the question, is that raw value such as justice or equity or consultation? Is that something that is existential or of existential importance to our society or not? And in order to answer that, we have to do that deep philosophical dives into understanding of what we want to do with our society and how we perceive our society going and where. Now, let's say we determine that this value is not important in the existential realm of the society, then it's probably not going to take that much importance from our time and our resources. So for example, if we determine that uh, the concept of equality is not an existential concept in our society, um, it is just something that is luxurious. So for example, when slavery was accepted in society, the idea of equality was not an existential value in that society. It wasn't until society went into internal conflict that people came out and they started saying, look, for in order for our society to continue existing, it is important to look at equality as a core existential value. But before that, it wasn't important. So the process stopped there. Now let's say we determine that through that deep philosophical dive, that such a value is of existential importance to the society. The next step is to make sure to publicize that this raw universal concept is a principle in our society. We have to turn it into something that we can communicate to people and to society and to basically have a social buy-in, a public social buy-in into that value. Because if society does not believe in it, it will not 
be it will not be accepted and hence it will not be applied we cannot move forward from there but society has to believe in that concept they have to see the value it's not something that is only amongst the elites or only amongst the uh, uh, the impro imp impoverished people the people that are maybe poor or uh, unfortunate no this is something that society as a whole accepts or the majority of society accepts and hence we can turn it into a social principle that's the third step. Once we turn it into a social principle, now we move into the logistical manifestation. So we have to turn it into logistical procedures that can be applied in society. For example, the idea of taking people's opinions into the governance of the system, the social, the, the political system, was turned into the concept of democracy here in the West. And how did the concept of democracy manifest itself as a procedure? It manifested itself as uh, some parliamentary um, uh, manifestations. It manifested itself as voting. So people actually cast their vote into the system. People nominate people initially that they think they are good enough to uh, be of political importance. And then they vote um, upon them, they ask them, give me your agenda, give me your um, what you're going to do. Uh, and then from there, they decide and then they vote. These are basically turning that raw concept into logistical procedures that are conducted in that society. All right, that's the fourth step. There's actually a fifth step, which we see right now being really pushed to the limits in the United States especially after what's ha what happened uh, at, the, at the Capitol, where the supporters of the current President Trump uh, just basically stormed uh, the, the government institutions, um, and they even turned physical. Um, and most of the police and most of the security forces, they just stood there. They didn't know what to do. And that's where the fifth step comes in, which is to establish a protection system. And what that means is that if somebody comes to say, I am not going to follow, I do not accept that raw concept that we as society understood as an existential concept, that we as society accepted as principle, and that we as society turned into logistical systems. If, if somebody comes and say, I'm not going to accept that, what do we do in order to protect this? Uh, this ecosystem that we have established. And now we see in, in what's happening in the United States, although there are uh, legal or constitutional measures to deal with the with a president that refuses to leave office, they exist. But now what do you do when somebody like this person, like the current President Trump, goes publicly and basically creates an internal social conflict that challenges this whole system and it is okay to challenge an existing system peacefully because that's what we agreed upon in society but when it turns into something that is physical and something that is emotional and illogical how do we protect that system and that is important when we come to establish a system that or to establish an ecosystem of values in our society now, we see it right now down in the United States. They might be stuck between the fourth step and the fifth step. And I asked the questions to you know, the Muslims. Which step are we stuck on? This concept of shura. How far did we push it down the line of, or the, the cycle of turning it into something that is socially conducted as systems in our lives? I hope this was helpful. Go to www.understandislam.ca and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode.